Beast Mode, hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Beast from Deal on the Beast. I'm here tonight with J Dog. <clears throat> and we are reviewing, well, he specifically is reviewing Rhyme. J Dog, take it away and tell him what you thought. I have completed the entire game, and I told you guys I'd be back with a full review when, when that time happened. So, let's talk about this game, and let me give you my final thoughts on it. I want to first start off with the good. Number one thing about this game that I really liked was the sound and the score. The music in this game is spectacular. And honestly, it's worth a playthrough just for that reason. Uh, you can just sit here and listen to the music and never get sick of it. It is incredible. And it adds so much to the feeling of the world and the exploration that you're doing. Other great things about this game would be some of the graphics as you can see in this playthrough they're pretty darn good okay thirty dollar game pretty decent graphics got that kind of watercolor vibe uh... to them kind of reminded me a lot of zelda breath of the wild i really liked the graphics in this game i also thought the controls were very good the character moved very easily was responsive for the most part he made the jumps that i wanted him to make in the platforming section uh, camera movement was easy. I never had anything happen where I thought it was really, really obtuse to move the character. Initially, the feeling of discovery in the game was exceptional. Uh, this island area was by far the best area in the game. Um, so that initial sense in this in this in this specific area was awesome. And unfortunately, it didn't carry over throughout the entire game, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But this awesome initial sense of waking up and discovering things on this island, solving puzzles, meeting your little fox friend was really awesome. And I really liked that. Um, I love the ending in this game. I don't want to ruin it for anyone, but uh, it's worth playing through to the final end. Um, the story does make, start to make some sense by the time you get to the end. Uh, and it comes together very nicely. Um, and the ending was emotional uh, and well done. Two other things I liked about this game that were game design decisions, I think. Number one, the puzzles. As you can see here, they were not terribly difficult. That's what I was looking for. I didn't need a missed level game. I wanted them to test me a little bit, but I wanted them to be things I could solve. For instance, this thing is basically a timer. Well, hey, not terribly hard to run up here, get up these steps, and jump on it, and get over the other ledge. So yeah, it took me about 25 seconds to figure out what I had to do, and I did it. Again, that's what I was looking for. A lot of the puzzles were like that. Some of them were a little more complex, but uh, for the most part, they, I did not need to use a guide to beat this game. I was able to accomplish it on my own, and that's exactly what I wanted. So in that respect, the gameplay and the puzzles were exactly what I was looking for. And one other thing I really liked about this game, when you die in the game, which basically means you jump off a ledge you, that you fall too far, or you'll fight some enemies later on and you don't get out of their way, you just basically, the screen goes dark, and you basically respawn. There's no long loading, you don't lose a lot of progress. So it was very easy to keep playing. And again, that was something I really liked about this game. So that is mostly the good. And honestly, my initial impression of this game ended up being higher than my overall impression. And the main reason for that was that the you, you, you visit four environments in this game and here you're seeing gameplay from the first environment which is the island that you wake up on unfortunately the final three environments are not nearly as interesting or as awesome to explore as this initial place that you start on so for me that was the biggest letdown in this game as you can see here look at this awesome world view look at this panorama you want to explore every crevice of this island. And unfortunately, I never felt that way about the other three areas we went to. So that was a major letdown for me. 
you're gonna you're going to visit a desert a city and kind of like this rainy catacombs or abyss or whatever you want to call it so you're gonna visit those three areas and uh, honestly I felt they got progressively less interesting um, and the reason perhaps that I felt this way was that in this game in this specific area look at how bright it is um, look at how you know when you get up on a cliff you can overlook the island you can see an interesting point way off in the distance that you might want to go to so it just felt like there was this entire world that you could see and explore when you got into the city for instance the puzzles were contained within rooms or corridors and so there was never a sense of grandeur that this specific island provided when you get to the ending area for instance you can almost see nothing ahead of you and so for me that was very disappointing in some respects I wish they had ended the game in this area because you I would have felt I think more positive about it had this been my ending experience instead of the start so look at all Why don't you think they were trying to tell a story about character growth with those three different four different experiences yes bright and open here and as you move on as as you continue on it could be just a metaphor for life as you continue on in life it gets darker and drearier and more yes. drab and less interesting so the so the environments make sense I think within the context of the story so again I understand where they were going with it from a story perspective but from a gameplay and an exploration perspective and from a fun perspective the other three environments did not provide me with the same initial sense of awe and that is one of the main reasons I need to I, I take a, a, a small downgrade to this game uh, the second environment is a desert area now that area is a wide open area as well but you spend a ton of time fighting fighting an enemy in that area um, pretty intuitive fight I actually enjoyed it uh, I felt pretty accomplished when I finally defeated him uh, but the entire area is cloaked in in gray so almost like you're running around in a black and white environment when you get done uh, defeating him uh, because you need to basically blot out the sun in a way and, and cause storms to come over the area so you never got to really explore the area because basically it's a flying bird right and if you're exploring in the sun he comes and gets you um, so you never get to explore this beautiful area like I had hoped you would um, you can explore it but you're gonna explore black and basically a gray drab area so that for me was a letdown one of the other things that I felt was an overall disappointment was the interaction with the Fox character he's the first basically the first main puzzle you do is to unlock this fox uh, from uh, from this from this puzzle in the in the in the in the game and you never really interact with him he basically is your spirit animal or something something to that effect where he leads you and he's off in the distance and you see him barking and you can go up to him and that's basically the way you're supposed to go but you don't really ever use him in puzzles or need him to progress in the game at the very end or towards the very end of the game you're able to pet him a little bit and you know laugh you can go up by him and he laughs with him and stuff but you never really got the sense of bonding with that character that I had hoped you would throughout the game so for me that interaction was a little bit disappointing and furthermore I never truly truly felt super connected to this main character and I'm not sure if that's because there's a lack of dialogue within the game or not but I never I, I didn't have an immediate sense of of the tragedy that this game that this game talks about um, the story is well told but again I'm not sur sure if it's because of the fact that there isn't a lot of dialogue uh, it felt more like a story you were gonna experience and not necessarily as personal of a journey as I hoped it would have been at least for me so finally 
One of the other one of the other things that we noticed, especially in in the later areas, is it was a little bit difficult to know exactly where you could or couldn't go. Even here, it was hard to really tell all the time. And I'm talking about the areas you would go and explore, right? Not not the main areas because going from point A to point B within the game isn't terribly difficult. But knowing where certain extra areas would be seemed a little difficult at times. You know, it didn't seem to me like there was any way to tell where the collectibles were, and I'm not certain if there was, if that would open up with the second playthrough. One of the, this game does allow you to replay the stages to go through and get all the collectibles if you, if you desire that. Um, so that I thought was good. But there never was really a way to see the collectibles or know where they were uh, while you were in your playthrough. So that made it a little difficult. And I don't know if there is a huge sense of replay in this game for me. Um, I certainly would replay the island section of it, but I probably would not replay the other three areas. So this is a $30 game, and I was able to complete it in about two sittings, maybe five hours of playtime, six hours of playtime. So the value isn't great, okay? Uh, without really having maybe multiple endings which wouldn't really make sense in this type of game or an unlocking some sort of fifth area if you get all the collectibles or something to that effect which I don't believe this game has I can't really see the $30 price tag for it so I rented the game uh, and was able like I said to complete it well within the time that I had it rented for so that I think is what my overall recommendation would be uh, would be to give this game a rent or to pick it up on on a substantial sale uh, because for the amount of time you'll spend with it that's where the value would lie um, I do want to commend this game overall though and recommend it overall because I thought it was a well done piece of storytelling with an excellent musical score so if you do have the opportunity I think it would be a great game to check out but I definitely think you can wait for a sale on it. It's not something that's probably worth $30. So my overall score on this game would be about a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, pretty good experience overall, but it doesn't quite have enough to really put it into that upper echelon of games that we have played in our in our time as gamers. Uh, but that being said, I'm not, I believe To Kill It Works is a relatively new relatively new studio and so for, for one of their first works or at least first works that I've experienced uh, I have an overall positive tone a positive experience with them um, so seven and a half out of ten I enjoyed my time with the game but I'm glad I rented it and uh, I'm happy I did did not purchase it uh, for thirty dollars <clears throat> well there you have it the, re the official word from J Dog himself I'm based from Deal on the Beast and I'm J-Dog. I want you guys to look around the screen. You'll see some videos for other reviews that we've been doing. Click that D3B3 to subscribe and join the pack today. And we'll see you all right here next time. Good night.